Well, hello there. I am so delighted that you have decided to join me, the aspiring chemist, on another exciting adventure. Today, as you have anticipated, I'm going to feature another yet interesting experiment. Today, guys, I'm going to teach you how you can make an acid and base in your own home. But don't need to worry, I've already explained acids and base extensively in another of my videos. So if you have any questions, you can always refer to those videos. Okay, the thing is that recently my hydrochloric acid acid on my dry is finished and I wanted to make another batch. So I thought to myself, instead of just making another batch of acid and base, why don't I show my viewers how they can also make it at home? So here we are. And today I'm going to teach you how you can make hydrochloric acid acid on my dry by using simple yet common materials. So guys, stay tuned to my video because it's going to be a quick test and I do not want you to miss it. Well, the first and foremost important, important material is salt. Obviously, salt and this is a sodium chloride based salt. The next material we're going to need is water. All of us drink water so I, this material will be hard for us to get. And the last we're going to need is electricity. I'm going to be using this wiring for the experiment. These are the three basic materials we're going to use for this entire experiment. Okay, I have these two suitable containers I'm going to use. I have this fabric I'm going to use as my salt bridge. You could use toilet paper or filter paper. I have this socket here and I have this wiring which is giving me 12 volts slash 1 amp output. And I already measured out 40 grams of sodium chloride salt. Okay guys, this is my electrolytic setup. But I want you to look at my electrodes. Okay, if you notice, this is copper. And this copper is serving as the cathode. Why this is carbon? This carbon here is serving as the anode. Don't worry guys, I'm going to do a very detailed explanation of electrodes and everything under electrolysis. But I just want you to know that I chose these two electrodes for this particular experiment. This is the setup. Now let's go move a little bit closer to see what is happening at the electrodes. Okay guys, this is the cathode and you can see that it's bubbling so much. That is hydrogen that this cathode is emitting because it is attracting the H plus ions contained in solution. And this is the anode, the carbon anode. Well, it doesn't look like much is happening because the bubbling that takes place around this electrode is slow, but chlorine gas is being emitted out of this electrode. And because of that, I seriously advise you and I seriously urge you not to try this experiment indoors because chlorine gas is very poisonous and it can kill. So when you're trying this experiment, make sure you try it in a well-ventilated area. Okay? I'm back here the second day and as you can see, my electrolysis reaction is still proceeding. If you notice this first container, is clear and that's where our sodium hydroxide will be formed. But this container is cloudy and pale yellow. The cloudy is not a problem because I can always filter it. But it's pale yellow because chlorine gas is being dissolved in the solution. This proves to us that chlorine gas is being emitted. And that's why it's important that you practice this experiment outside. Now let's see what's happening in these solutions. Well, this is a diagrammatic representation of what is happening in our solution. First of all, we have a battery that has DC current, which is one part negative and one part is positive. We have negative side to be here and the positive side to be here. Now, when current is passed through the solution, electrons are taken up from this electrode and are infused into this electrode. That makes this electrode positive and this negative. Now, because it's positive, it will attract negative ions. And because of that, it attracts the hydroxide ions and chloride ions. And also pulls the chloride ions from this part of the solution, 
So the chloride ions here will disappear. And the one available here, the chloride ions and the hydroxide ions will be competing for which will be perfectly discharged at this electrode. Now normally, in normal situations, the hydroxide ions will be discharged as oxygen gas while the chloride ions will stay in the, in the solution. But because the chloride ions are concentrated, the hydroxide ions will not be discharged, but instead the chloride ions will be discharged as chlorine gas. And that is why the experiment is kind of dangerous because chlorine gas is a very poisonous gas and we do not want to be affected by its toxicity. Also, some hydroxide ions will also be discharged here to give out oxygen gas. So, some chloride ions will always be left in the solution, while some of the hydroxide ions will also be eliminated from the solution. Now, let's fo focus on our negative electrode. Now, this negative electrode attracts positive ions, ions like sodium and hydrogen. So it will take out the sodium that is present in this solution and bring it here. Now, sodium and hydrogen, there's no need for competition. Because hydrogen will always be discharged because of where it is on the electrochemical series. So hydrogen gas is released from this electrode. And as a result, the hydrogen gas is here will hydrogen ion, sorry, will be removed leaving us with the hydroxide ions in this solution. And more hydrogen ions will be left in this solution. And as a result, we are left with sodium hydroxide in this beaker and hydrochloric acid in the other beaker. And now the salt bridge, which could be made from fabric or filter paper is from the name implies it says that a bridge to carry the ions from one solution to the other solution okay this is the complete guide to the ex to the electrolysis reaction that is happening in our chemical solutions okay guys this is a quick test i was talking about now here's your question in our reaction we use photograms of sodium chloride 200 milliliters of water in each beaker. So, with these two values I've given you, can you calculate the final concentration, the final yield you will have of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid? And please, when you do, you can write your answers in the comments below. Okay, guys, I've given this reaction about seven days, so I'd like to disassemble it. This is my hydrochloric acid and this is my sodium hydroxide. As you can see, they are very impure and they need filtering. Okay, I'm going to filter my sodium hydroxide first. Okay, filtering took some time, so while it's filtering, I would like us to see the solution to the question I gave earlier. So, as primary chemists, Let's start solving. Okay, these are the values I gave you earlier. 40 grams of sodium chloride, 200 mils in each beaker. So we want to find the concentration of our hydrochloric acid. So we have um, 40 grams of sodium hydroxide, 36.5 grams of hydrochloric acid, 58.5 grams of sodium chloride, and 18 grams of water. And these are because of the relative molecular masses of the individual element. Like for sodium, we have 23, oxygen 16, hydrogen 1, and chlorine 35.5. So 58.5 58 grams of sodium chloride will give us 36.5 grams of hydrochloric acid so one gram of sodium chloride will then give us 36.5 over 58.5 grams of hydrochloric acid therefore 
40 grams given to us of sodium chloride will give us going using the formula it will give us 24.96 grams of hydrochloric acid now we have 24 point 24.96 grams of hydrochloric acid dissolved in in 200 cm cube given to us earlier 200 cm cube so we will, at the end of the day we will end up with 124.8 grams of hydrochloric acid dissolved in one dm cube of solution so our mass concentration will be one two four point eight gram per dm cube of hydrochloric acid now to find our molar concentration the main thing we're looking for we follow the simple formula by dividing our mass concentration by the molar mass of the compound. So we have 124.8 gram per dm cube divided by 36.5 gram per mole. And when you do the math, you end up with 3.42 mole per dm cube of hydrochloric acid okay let's solve our second question the concentration of sodium hydroxide using the same method 58.5 grams of sodium chloride will afford us 40 grams of sodium hydroxide according to our reaction so if one gram of sodium chloride 6.5 gram per mole and when you do the math you end up with 3.42 mole per dm cube of hydrochloric acid okay let's solve our second question, the concentration of sodium hydroxide. Using the same method, 58.5 grams of sodium chloride will afford us 40 grams of sodium hydroxide, according to our reaction. So if one gram of sodium chloride gives 40 over 58.5 grams of so sodium hydroxide then 40 grams of sodium chloride will afford us um, will afford us if you do the math you give us 27.35 grams of sodium hydroxide so since 27.35 grams of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in 200 cm cube of water then 136.75 grams of sodium hydroxide will be dissolved in 1 dm cube of solution so our mass count will therefore be 136.75 gram per dm cube while our molar conk will be 1.136.75 gdm cube divided by the molar mass relative molecular mass which is 40 gram per mole do the math you have 3.42 mole per dm 
cube of sodium hydroxide. So, uh, so if you recall, our radicalic acid has 3.42 mole per dm cube, and our sodium hydroxide also had 3.42 mole per dm cube. So, our both solutions are going to have the equal number of concentration in the two of them. Our solutions are done with filtering. So if you notice this solution at my left, it's quite has this pale yellow color, and that's because it contains the chlorine and is our hydrochloric acid. But if you notice this one is more or less clear, and that's because that's our sodium hydroxide. But to do a more profound profound check, I would like to be using yellow litmus paper to check the both solutions. Okay, to check our solution A with a yellow litmus paper. I will dip it into the solution. You see this red? See this red? This is a pH of around 1. Okay, we keep that. And for solution B, we dip it into the sodium hydroxide solution. And you see, this is a pH of around 14. So, folks, make sure you subscribe and like my videos if you have given value from this one. And I'll see you in my next video.